In this problem, we have an example that we did in class, the flying toy pig. So we have a 353 gram flying toy pig and it's attached by a string to the ceiling and turned on. The pig flies around at 0.48 rotations per second. The string is 1.19 meters long and the horizontal circle that the pig flies around is one meter in diameter. So the first thing we're asked to do is to draw the free body diagram. Um, then we need to write down the two equations for Newton's second law. And then finally, we need to find the tension in the string using each of the equations and we wanna compare our results. So the way we're gonna start is we're gonna write down our givens and finds and we're gonna draw a picture. So we're given um, the mass is equal to 0 0.353 kilograms. Um, I don't know why it doesn't give me a nice period, but it doesn't. Um, the, the omega, so our angular speed is equal to 0 0.48 rotations per second. And we're given that our the length of our string, we'll call that L, is equal to 1.19 meters. And we know that our diameter is equal to 1 meter. And we'll just right away just say, well, that means that our radius is equal to 0 0.5 meters. And let's draw a picture. So we've got this circle, this horizontal circle this pig is flying around. And we have our pig so with wings. And our pig is attached to the ceiling. We know this length is L, and we know the diameter of the circle is D. And then we also know then if our diameter is D, then we know from the center of the circle here, we've got a radius of R. And so um, we're going to define our theta in this example right here. So that's our theta. And we know that, um, that for trigonometry, we have sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which in our case is the radius over the length. And so theta then is going to equal sine inverse of our radius is 0 0.5 meters and our length is 1.19 meters. And when we solve that, we end up with theta is equal to 25 degrees. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is let's um, draw a free body diagram. So we draw, our, draw a free body diagram. We know that our pig is right here and we've got a tension like this and we have an FG like that. And thinking about our tension, we wanna really break that up, right? So we've got a tension, it looks like that. And that's made up of the radial components. So that's my R, T or T sub R. Uh, let's do that a little better, oops. So I've got T sub R and my, um, Z component, which is our T sub Z, right? So in our case, we're gonna say our, um, this is our Z component. Z is positive up, R is positive towards the center of the circle. So that's our coordinate system. And here is our theta. Okay, so um, we're gonna be breaking the components of T up into our radial component and our Z component. So let's do that now. So let's see our TR is opposite over hypotenuse. So TR is gonna be T sine of theta. And our TZ is adjacent to theta. So we're gonna have T cosine theta. Okay, and so if we do our um, Newton's second law for in the radial direction, we're gonna have some of the forces in the radial direction. And remember this pig is moving in a circle, right? So it's moving in a circle like this. In this horizontal circle, and the, radi the t, um, t sub r is pointing to the center of the circle, it's moving with circular motion. So I know I'm gonna have ma here. So the radial component is only towards the center. So we're just gonna have t sub r, that's our only component in the radial direction is equal to m. And then the acceleration um, for circular motion is v squared over r. 
So TR, we found right up here, is T sine theta is equal to mv squared over r. So t is equal to mv squared over sine over r sine theta. And we don't we know all of those things. We know the mass and we know the radius and we know theta, but we don't know the velocity yet. So we're oops. We are looking for the velocity, so we we need to find the velocity. And we're going to do that in just a minute. We're going to do that using um, our um, oh, angular velocity, our rotations per second, but we're not going to do that quite yet. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to write down our free our Newton's second law in the z direction. So some let's go back to blue. So we've got oops, uh, some of the forces in the z direction are equal to zero because my object isn't my um, my pig is not moving up and down. We're going to assume that. So we've got t in the z direction minus fg is equal to zero. And t in the z direction is t cosine theta. Um, and we'll bring, we'll add fg to both sides and we'll write fg as mg. So t then is equal to mg over cosine theta. And if we plug in our values, we get t is equal to 0. 353 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared over cosine of 25. And when we plug that in, we get T is equal to 3.8 newtons. Okay, so now we want to go back and we want to... Um, figure out what t is using this equation. So I'm going to grab this equation. Oops. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to copy that, and well, I guess I can't. So I'll just rewrite it. So t is equal to mv squared over r sine theta. And what do we do about v? Well, we know that our omega is equal to 0 0.48 rotations per second. And we want to turn that into radians per second. So we're going to multiply that by times 2 pi um, radians per rotation, so our rotations cancel, and I'm left with omega is equal to uh, 3.0 radians per second, and then I can find v is equal to omega times r, and that's equal to 3 radians per second times 0 0.5 meters per second, or meters, sorry, meters. And so we get V is equal to 1.5 meters per second. So we need to plug that in. So we're going to have T is equal to 0 0.353 kilograms times 1.5 meters per second squared all over 0 0.5 meters times sine of 25. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get 3.8 newtons, just like we did with the Newton's law in the z direction. So we just go back, reminding ourselves what we did. Oops. Right here, we were able to find the tension using the equation for the forces in the r direction and using our circular motion equation. And we we're also able to find the tension using our some of the forces in z and then solving uh, using the components in z.